further ado, welcome everyone to the revival first episode of the Authenticity Hour. My name is James. I run a company called Shogun Social and Shogun Podcast Studios, and I'm joined by an incredible guest today, Levi, an agency owner who runs an agency called Milk Tree. He's going to tell us all about that. Um, but I just want to welcome everyone back. We've been on hiatus for like what a year and a half, I think, um, purely it's because I was like, "How do I get my team involved in something?" So we were like, right, let's create a podcast. And then we scaled the business. They've gotten so busy. I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to have to use the fact that I have more time to do stuff like this to you know, just take it back over again. So yeah. we're going to start just talking to some incredible people, yeah. get into it, but a little bit more personal, authentic, doubling yeah. down on that and just have some fun with it because that's what it's all about. So we've got to start with, in 60 seconds or less, who are you and what is Milk Tree? All right. So I'm Levi, uh, we're in an agency called Milk Tree. We're um, very design focused. Uh, we've got sort of staff here, we've got some staff in India, we've got some staff in the Philippines as well. Um, and yeah, we're just uh, an agency, a design focused agency, I'd say. Nice. Um, that is really, for me personally, my main passion is design. So, Mr. Worldwide. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, we've got people all over the place. It's sometimes difficult, but I think nowadays it's like it's easy yeah. to work together, isn't it? Yeah, so that, that remote slash UK unit, I think, works for a lot of businesses. We're the same. We have we have people that in South Africa who are absolutely incredible. Which, um, interesting, the South Africa thing. I didn't, yeah. I did, never really looked at South Africa. It's so good. Time zone. Yeah. yeah the, the time zone, one or two hours difference. Yeah. It's just so perfect to, to work with them. And they're so talented as well. They're yeah. just some absolute gems uh, yeah. that people just don't take take enough heed to. So when you say de design focused agency, what are the exact services in that? So and what does design focused mean as opposed to being something else focused? Okay, on? so it's quite interesting actually. So when we first started, we were, as you do, like you're doing loads of different things, but then there was sort of, a, like for example, what you guys do, the social, mm. we couldn't really execute that to as good a level so mm. a lot of our design stuff so we mainly focus on specific ad campaigns yep. web design graphic design mm -hmm. um, and e we sort of venture into email marketing as well which Excellent. again but it's always like design centric so for example with the emails we'll design each section perfectly and sometimes it does take a lot longer but mm. like I said everything we do is sort of mainly focus on design so nice. So it's all about using kind of visual mediums to yeah. increase performance, yeah. basically. And yeah, that, yeah. That trickles down into a lot of things, right? Yeah. What are some of the key elements that you guys are looking at at the moment? So obviously, the, it was the, whether it's design trends, whether it's just yeah. like the human psychology that goes into design. Yeah. What is some of that that you guys execute to make your designs kind of different? So what we do, a lot of it is the people that are employ. I always tend to go for people that are sort of, they've got their own style and mm. they're really really passionate about design so like mm. for example like at the moment a big thing that we're looking at is like user experience i think user experience is massive and actually it's getting more and more important mm. than it was for even when i first started like now if we're looking at say uh, a web page for example yeah in the past we'd have had a lot of like content on the web page because the old sort of school like seo side of it you'd have to have sort of 800 words yeah when is now Mm. it's really difficult to execute a page that's going to convert with with so many words. So now we're really focused on just big, bold CTAs. Mm -hmm. like it's really easy to sort of navigate, especially a landing page. Um, yeah. So landing pages, obviously that goes into the web part of it. But mm. yeah, design across the board, really. Across nice. the board. It brings out an interesting thread, though, about over the last three years, because we started our agency yeah, similar exactly times. Same I time. had no idea. We yeah. sat right next <laughs> we to each other. We've been sat next to each other for uh, a few weeks. Which is nuts. <laughs> um, but in terms of what you've seen, in terms of the changes then, how have you seen like design having to shift based on what basically user behaviour? Yeah, well, I think what's happening now is like where it's getting um, easier and easier, like especially with web design, there's a lot of really good sort of no-code, stroke low-code sort of things that you can use now. Mm -hmm. I think now it's really focus on clean clean user experiences there's like yeah. you need to be able to land on a page i think i saw something the other day that like the average sort of the amount of time someone spends on a page is 50 seconds yeah so if if you've got say a thousand words how are they going to read well, that they can't read seconds. it in 50 seconds so you're better off sort of cutting it down into really clear mm. cta so like a, mm. a hero which just says your mvp what you do a little bit of a, like a couple of sentences underneath yeah and then, like, you'll jump straight in with your services mm. and then says so, so some social proof. Yeah. So it's a lot. It's, I think f when websites, in the last few years, they feel like they've changed massively. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Like I know the parallax stuff has started to really take effect. Whereas yeah. you're moving for a page, things are coming in. Things yeah, are now coming internet up. speed can keep up with it without yeah. it like hurting your SEO. Because yeah. before you'd have this great idea, and then the speed score would be like, nah. You're yeah, not you can't that. do it. You can't do it, and then your bounce rates would come really high, which again it pulls you pulls you back down on SEO. Mm. Um, so I think I have found personally like a, it's a lot more design focused in terms of web development in general because. Yeah. Like I said, the no code stuff, like the web flows, uh, framers. There's another one um, mm. I saw the other day called Cards, I think it's called, which is yeah. just for landing pages. Like it's getting easier and easier to set up these yeah. these pages. So it's about making sure that they're really clean. Are you seeing a lot of companies try and take like landing page design in house, and what are kind of the common mistakes when putting together a landing page that people need to avoid? Um, so yeah, what what I've found is I've still found that with a lot of web stuff. Um, people do like to, like I said, out get someone else to do it. Um, mm. But there is a, a lot of these like, old school companies that like they they haven't they're not move that they're, they're SEO centric. Someone sent me a proposal that they got from someone else the other day, and like mm. it's a big big cost website. Um, but then you look through their sort of showreel and you think like these websites aren't they're they're they're, they're good and they're functional and they will rank. But at the same time, it's like. The experience when you're on it, it's, I'm all about the experience. Yeah. Like it's really important for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of people, companies, they, they can bring it in house, but at the same time, mm. there is things that you need to look for. You need 100%. to be heavily CTAs of, of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's really sort of underrated is the wireframing yeah. side of it. So we'll just do that. What is wireframing for someone who has no uh, clue? So wireframing is how you d basically you design the website before you develop it. Yep. And you can use like things like Figma. Yep. Uh, the guys have had like, Figma. Like, um, mm -hmm. You can use that for it, but you can also just use your pad. You can use a, a piece yeah, of paper. I've seen plenty you of sketches. You yeah. can just sketch it. Actually, the way the industry is changing is, especially with like, the AI side of things, you can actually upload the sketches and it will turn it into a wireframe. Yeah. Is that uh, a part of ChatGPT4? Okay. Yeah, well, there's a plugin for it. Um, there is a plugin for it that you yeah, can yeah, yeah. you can create wireframes, and actually, um, it's really important. Like a sketch, a sketch that you can do in five minutes that can literally influence the whole way you develop a, a landing page. Mm. A lot of the time, people will just dive straight into the development, yeah, and sort of make it up, not make it up as they go along, but yeah, yeah. But there, I, I suppose the sketch, weirdly enough, is actually easier to yeah. get user feedback on because you can just show, like, you can like call one of your customers, and be like, hey, I'm thinking about changing the website. Would this get you? Yeah, like, yeah, that exactly. Could, you know, and that people don't do that enough. To be yeah, people, I think like nowadays, like people are using pen and paper less. That's what. Do you know what? It's the third time I've seen that one of these this week. Hey, um, shouts out, remarkable. <laughs> yeah, it changed my life. I could yeah. not operate without them. My yeah. whole brain is in this. If someone yeah. robs me, I'm like, take my phone, take yeah. my keys, just take leave my car. Remarkable. You can leave my remarkable alone. <laughs> I will die <laughs> before I lose this thing. Yeah, yeah. But th honestly, like just just drawing it out first can have a massive impact on mm. actually the end result, and yeah. it's something that people don't spend enough time on. No, because clients also have a unique vision of how they want their website yeah. to look. Obviously, yeah. and often that needs to be tweaked. And like I know, for especially for graphic design or web design, yeah, when you're starting with a client from complete scratch. And you have no idea where that you know you don't know how picky they are. Yeah. If it's a new client, right? The design process is so subjective. Yeah, that yeah. maybe get actually getting them to sketch their first thoughts. Yeah, is probably good. It makes them feel more involved because yeah. otherwise it's just feel, it does feel like a shot in the dark sometimes yeah. in the design process. Yeah, and there's many refined you know design agency that's managed to get it to like a T, but. Yeah, you know, a lot of young guns out here will not know how how mental the amount of amend you have to do. Yeah, if you're not uh, used to that cycle. Honestly, it's um that that's one of the big things. For example, we create like a brand identity for a client. Yeah, we've got one at the moment where I won't say no names, but um, <laughs> it is they're they're overseas. They're based over in another country. Yeah. Um, and what the amount of time? I think we're on V twelve now for their logo. Lordy, Lordy. And it's like. The, the issue that we had f in th with them, for example, is um, they didn't really give a massive brief. Like we, we've got a system which, to be fair, we use AI now for our briefing systems. Yeah. Um, so we've got like a, a, an outline and then we sort of put information into it and then it turns into, into a proper brief. But, nice. um, but these guys, they didn't really give us a massive brief. But I think the most difficult clients, they don't know what they want, but they know exactly what they want. 
Yeah, they, <laughs> they know it when they see it. Yeah, yeah, they I'll know go when they say, see it. As toxic as that was me with our re- with recent rebrand. Yeah. Like one of our internal graphic designers like sat me down. We did like a whole hour session. Yeah. Dived into what kind of Shogun means and everything, which was really good. Yeah. And he yeah. Na- then nailed the brief first time because of it. Yeah. But before then, I couldn't have articulated what he created. Yeah. So it was yeah. like that. That was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. How did you even start Milk Tree in the first place? Because everyone has this amazing origin story of how they managed to do it in some place somewhere. Yeah. Hit me with yours. All right. So it's um, quite interesting, actually. Um, so I, at uni, I done business and IT and marketing was a big part of what I done within my mm-hmm. degree. Um, and then I left university, uh, ended up in recruitment. As yeah, ended as up as in, you a, do. As you do, ended up in recruitment. I um. A friend of mine was like, oh, do you want to come here? It's like a sales role talking to people, which is what I enjoy. I, enjoy, I actually do enjoy talking to people. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we I got into recruitment. was doing really well, like good money. But I wasn't, like, passionate enough about it. And actually, yeah. I think I, I think you get to, like, a certain point in life where if you doing something you're passionate about actually become, that's the most important thing. Yeah, you, you can be great at something but not enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um so yeah, I was in I was in recruitment and I started looking at like the uh, the agency I was working for, big company, turnover millions a year, mm. and I was like, wait a minute, they're not like this. The way they their systems aren't great. Mm. Um, they don't like they they're using an old school CRM which looks like Windows XP. <laughs> Everything just phones, 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 phones. And I yeah. thought, wait a minute, there's an angle just in this industry. Yeah. So actually, when I first started, it was gonna just be completely focused on recruitment, and yeah. to this day. I most of our biggest clients are recruitment mm. agencies. Um, There's so much turnaround potential for them in everything. Yeah. Because the system's worked for so long, they haven't really innovated many things. They have. It's a B2B flaw in general yeah. across yeah. the board, but yeah, yeah, recruitment is definitely right for change. Yeah, 100%. And like in regards to like, like I said, the CRM systems, they look like, Oh, XP's probably just giving it too much. Like, when, I don't know if you, you're probably a bit young, but Windows 95. The first time I touched a computer was Windows 95. <laughs> I and think my first version <laughs> was 98, I've got to say. Like <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's what their CRM systems in. It's all like mail shots um, and just phone, 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 phone. And I thought, yeah. like, actually, wait a minute. Just through, there's a couple of things I can implement with purely based on this. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, yeah, that's that's how my first clients come, and they're actually still clients to this day. So, oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, recruitment was the main focus. So I was like, all right, what? How can I sort of like adjust this service that it's going to mm. work for recruitment agencies? And then I sort of fell into the trap of like, let's just do everything. Yeah, and it's very tempting. Yeah, yeah. It's set. like, okay, we're going to do this, 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 and this, and um, that's where like that's sort of from there it started growing really. Yeah. Um, so it was like just being a little bit disillusioned in what I was doing. Mm. Um. Like I said, recruitment, great industry, like and pretty recession proof as well. Especially what I was doing within yeah. um like healthcare recruitment. Yeah. Um yeah, there's no room. Yeah, that's no not sp- going anywhere. Yeah, no, to be fair, if anything, it just gets bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. Yeah. Um but yeah, so I was yeah, I was sort of just a career change and mm. it was what I studied and it within my degree, that was the marketing aspect of it was the part of it I enjoyed yeah. and the business side of it. So nice. So it was it was almost like what was that? That w- was there one moment that made you realize that like, I have to start my own thing and quit this job because obviously you were doing well. Yeah. You were comfortable. You could have stayed where you were. Yeah. Was there a catalyst event that led you to go, man, fuck this, I'm going to start my own thing? Um, yeah. So do you know what? It's from a young age, I've always said to myself that I wanted to work for myself. I remember being like super young and I used to watch um, Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs> and I remember watching that. Go when I, show. Yeah. <laughs> when, when I, when I, I, was, I would have been probably about 10, 11 and... I was like, yeah, I want to just like own my own business at one point. And yeah. I don't know where it come from because I can't say like, my dad's never owned his own business. My mum's never owned her own business. Um, one of my uncles was quite entrepreneurial. He used to be doing mm. this and that. Um, but at the same time, it was just in myself. I thought to myself, I think there was there was a couple of months when I, was, when I started looking at like my figures, et cetera, within mm. recruitment, I thought, wait a minute, I'm getting like 10 to maximum 15% of, what I'm bringing in there. Yeah. And actually, um, yeah, it's good. And I've got the whole infrastructure around me, but if I'm not enjoying it, like I once was, when I was, like I said, when I first went into it, I was just like, it's such a young environment. Yeah. You can really like, yeah. if you're hungry, you can make, you can make a fruit. lot of money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know what the, I wouldn't say there was a catalyst. It's just, I always knew mm. that I was going to, try and do my own thing at some point yeah it's got to be in the narrative the storybook that is your life has got to be part of it yeah i was weirdly similar in that like 
The Apprentice was the thing for me. Yeah. Because I would I would watch it and I would give like what I would have done for a task. Yeah. And then they would produce something infinitely worse. And I was like 12 and I was like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. It's yeah. so bad. Yeah. It gets worse every year, by what, the way. I was about to say, what is the deal with The Apprentice being it's so, they're so bad at business sometimes. It, if you go back and watch like season one, two, three, four, yeah. like, like they're much more serious yeah. like, business people than they are now. I think they're, they're just going down the entertainment angle. Yeah. Right? I've, yeah. Not to diss anyone that's been on it because I've met a couple of apprentice yeah. people but like oh like, mate some of the things they come up with there's just a lack of common sense but uh, I think they must do something to make their lives harder right yeah I'm convinced they don't let them use the internet yeah which, yeah 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 which to be fair if you took the internet away from me I'd be you pretty, went better yeah yellow pages um <laughs> so and I think they take away that element of like there's this like you know when you just run it it's like oh, I have no idea what that actually is yeah so yeah, when yeah. you can't actually do anything about yeah, it yeah 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 like, well, I'm just gonna make a dumbass decision. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't, they might. They must take the internet away from them. That's the only. That, that's the only, the only explanation. If they don't come now. Yeah, come on. Now. Yeah, yeah. That's nutty. If they yeah, because <laughs> the internet and making them decisions. Oh, because it's like because to be fair, the one the the test where they um where they have to go find a specific item. Surely you would just search the item and you'd know yeah, what it was. They have phones. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. Sure, it's sponsored. Like yeah. I think Samsung. Was yeah, sponsored yeah, yeah. They had the flips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, okay, okay. But yeah, maybe they give it to them, but only say you're only allowed to do this. There must yeah. be some rules or stipulations. If not, shame on you. Um, <laughs> go back and get an MBA or something. <laughs> like, whatever you've got to do. Um, but one thing I always like to ask is what actually excites you about marketing? Like there's always something that gives you that buzz, that high about a particular industry. Yeah. Like there are different industries. Like I'm thinking about property, even recruitment. Yeah. That make a shit ton more money. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. But I'm just like, what about marketing really gets you hooked around what is that next thing you got? Do, do you know? Yeah. So for me, the thing, and it sound, the sound does sound like a bit of a cliche, but I just love creating a solution to something, mm. a problem. And it actually, like some of the clients that I've enjoyed the most have been a lot of the smaller ones. Yeah. When you can go into like a, say like a, a joinery company, for example, who like they've been sort of at a level for a while, they they, they do well, but mm -hmm. actually you can go in there and say, all right, if you do this, this and this, we think that we can boost your sales up dramatically. Yep. And then you go in there and they're sort of like, nah, 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 we're all right, we're all right. But then you do it, they're like, oh, oh my God, like this is, we haven't changed our business model in 20 yeah, years. The and transformation potential yeah, for so many businesses yeah, is insane. Yeah, and 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 it's, it's the it's a very like people, I do actually, I'm, I'm quite like a quiet person, mm. but once I get to know someone, like I'd love to just bounce ideas off people and yeah. just like, and see sort of ways you can add value to their business. So it is just the, it's the mm. proven people that are a bit, maybe a little bit more old fashioned wrong that actually there's all these new things you can yeah. do. One thing that surprised the living hell out of me is obviously as a as a young as young business owners, we're always trying to grow, we're trying to scale, we're trying yeah. to get to a certain point. The amount of people I meet that actually don't want to grow. Yeah. They're yeah. happy with where they are. Yeah. Right now in my present current life, that confuses the living shit out of me. Yeah. I'm like, huh? What do yeah. you mean? I, I can't understand the concept of not wanting to grow. Yeah. And I understand it comes with more problems and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, you know, when you got M D seventy, you got a nice car, whatever, like yeah. They're fine. They're settled. They don't need. Yeah. I don't need none of this madness. And I'm like, maybe I'll get there one day in my life. But right now, I do not understand how you can do you it. Wouldn't want to grow more. Yeah. Um. But it, on that same thread, what do you think is some of the one of the biggest missed opportunities right now in marketing? Um. I think for me, and it, we spoke about this before, automation. Mm. I think automation to set up, sort of even basic automations, just to improve customer experience is such like a straightforward like it can be quite such a straightforward thing thing to do mm. and again the way i approach it would be mapping things out mm. drawing it just on a piece of paper how do you want it to look yeah but that's something a lot of people don't do anything for and i think it's crazy because all the biggest companies do yeah what's some of the easiest process people could automate or should start something um like? i'd say something like a customer feedback system for example mm -hmm. this is something that we've implemented for quite a few of our clients um where, for example, when a customer um, makes a purchase or mm -hmm. they come to a restaurant, they they, they get something. Um, just taking them through the process, sending them a, a message, oh, how did you find the service? Was it good or bad? And if they reply sort of positively, then it mm. took, takes them through to maybe leave a review. Yep. If, it, if they reply negatively, then just get feedback. Connect yeah. them to a, an online form. Um, and something like that, what I've found is customers in particular, they, they like to feel like they're being heard. Yeah. And that's something that every business that anyone is sort of 
even B2B to a level as well, but B2C especially, every B2C business yeah. should be doing that. If there's one thing B2B needs to do is learn more from B2C yeah. and, and the creativity and the yeah. customer service level that goes with that. Uh, I'm every day surprised at how far behind B2B likes to stay, um, especially with how customers actually yeah. buy. Like 99% of customers, they're looking for a new supplier for something. Yeah. They've probably bought into whatever they've picked before they've they've gone in. Yeah. Like you thinking that, you know, getting a pro- like getting a request for proposal is going to make a big difference if you're not the one they've already mentally selected. Yeah. It's a big, yeah. It's a big thing. Like that warm up, that content, that, yeah. that marketing work beforehand is yeah. going to make you win, I'd yeah. say, 70% of the pitches before you start yeah. pitching them. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it is, it's so, so important. But another thing I'm always looking at as well, like SEO has changed quite a bit. And I know this is like kind of none of neither of our fields, right? But yeah. the constant thing that always comes up is, is AI going to kill SEO? And I wanted to get your take on it since you're more on the <laughs> website because I'm like, they seem to be a dynamic that will always work together, but at the same time, c- can I see myself ever Googling everything through AI? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I always need to be a website to go to. Yeah, yeah. It's just a confusing concept. Uh, well, so SEO, obviously being in like the web design and stroke development side of it, like SEO is something, I, we don't overly offer it as a service. Like, well, I've got sort of a couple of companies I've partnered with mm. because... Again, it's it's just, it's its own niche, it um, but I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so at all. I think what's going to happen is, it's pro- Google are probably already doing it, but yeah. they're going to make it hard to rank. Like for example, <laughs> the content that you've been putting on LinkedIn, mm. you a, a robot's not creating that. No. Simple as that, and robot will never create it. It does like they're doing one. They're getting better and better, but it's the personal side of it. Like we spoke sort of off camera about it. Mm. Um, that personal side, like it grab my attention and that's sort of one of our one of how we started speaking because yeah. it um yeah. like yeah so I, I don't think so i think it's gonna get because there's so much content there's millions and millions of words that are just being chucked online and yeah. i think with it within by by the, the q1 of next year google will make it really difficult to rank for yeah. se for I'm surprised it is con- all about originality isn't yeah it? it is um, it is and i think i think google's last big content update really threw, threw things yeah. through a loop yeah and they're very good at already spotting AI yeah. content as well yeah. so there was this like golden few months where yeah you where you could rank blocks, massively um, yeah but that's that's definitely gone 100 percent. and to be fair though just to sort of um go on that like what are you in terms of seo they're AI, w- we do use it for sort of some of the on-page stuff, like your descriptions, your mm. page titles, etc. Because there's some really cool plugins now with mm. uh, d- uh, ChatGPT. There's an SEO plugin. Um, come, I think it's called SEO Boost, and you put your web web page in there, and then it will give you sort of some keyword suggestions. Mm. It can write your tags. It can write your titles. It won't write that's content, nice. but it's really no, because that's good though, because that is the manual labor stuff yeah. that all probably people, even in SEO, yeah. hate doing. Yeah, right? yeah. Those that tagging, the image optimization, the whole yeah. line, like it's it's just a long process. Yeah, it is a long labor, process, really. Yeah, um, it is. But it is so interesting. I mean, I mean, attention grabbing and content, like I can go on all day about yeah. that kind of stuff, right? But one of the things that you probably don't shout out enough is that you're also great at lead gen. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Your business starts 24-7. Yeah. What makes a successful campaign now in 2023 in your view? So, so lead gen, again, that's one of the big things I'm passionate about. I think, again, it goes, a lot of it goes to design. Like, you, you want to be, like, emotive in what mm. you're saying. Like, the language, like, a lot of our, I'll be honest with you, a lot of our best ads, um have been headlines with maybe six to eight words, not a nice clean design. And then when they click the link, they go to a landing page, which is not a lot of information. It's just key points, stuff that we know they want to know. Um, graphic based or imagery based or both? Yeah, so we we so we so use graphics. We right. actually use graphics. So we, um, I've done video. Video is amazing as mm-hmm. well, but just we- Just hard to get hold of yeah, clients it's, usually. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like it's almost impossible to get hold of. Hold of. <laughs> um, but- um, yeah, so a lot of the time we'll look at, okay, we'll do a customer persona. What is the person that we're um, we're trying to sort of grab their attention? Mm. What we're restricted by a lot of the time with um, Facebook ads is a lot of time we're doing employment ads. Okay. So you can't be as specific about the um, the mm. audience. So you need to sort of, that's why we're, it's very design-centric because where you can't be specific about the audience, mm. you need to grab everyone's attention. If, you, if people within that sort of, um, that group, see yeah. your see your ad they need to want to click it and um yeah so a lot of it's design it's going to be a nice clean design uh, a one one page sometimes do carousels mm. but just normally a one page design 
1080 by 1080 px which is square okay. um and then taking the, the person to a landing page yeah. where and we will build for every sort of big campaign we'll do we'll, we'll be to build a specific landing page for that campaign yeah. And that's, that's a big, big part of it. Yeah. So many people waste so much ad spend yeah. sending it just to homepage yeah. or yeah. to maybe a specific service page. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. for brand awareness, that yeah. might be fine, but the conversion rate off of it will. It's, it's not great. Um, not you, why not? Nah. And the thing is, you can do like obviously Facebook do their forms as well, which I've heard good things about. We've mm. never really had much success with them. A lot of the time, it's taking people to a page with a contact form on the page as well. Mm. Um, so in sp as opposed to going to like a job form, you click the link, you go to job form, actually have the contact, a multi-step contact form on the page. So yeah. all the buttons they click, just take them to the bottom of the page. They never leave one page. So, yeah. and they're, they're the best ones we've had. They're yeah. the best ones we've Simplistic had. Simplistic journey to the one. Yeah. The platform is using at the moment, are you covering obviously the meta suite? Are you using LinkedIn at all at the moment? Y yeah, so do you know what? This is something that we said, we spoke about. Um, I have never been, uh, I'd never be a big poster across social media in general. Like even before I was in, like even personally, I just don't yeah. post on social a lot. Um, it's something I, I know I need to do because mm. it's important to sort of, because I, I love conversations like this. I'd like, like discovery calls. I really enjoy them. That's yeah. where I get the most probably satisfaction out of just speaking yeah. to people. Um, so yeah, I don't post on social media a lot. To yeah. be, honest, be honest with you, at no, all, I, actually. I, I think that's probably the majority of the audience, to be yeah. honest. Like, um, even before I started Shogun, I was very much a lurker. Online. Yeah. I didn't yeah. actually post anything. Yeah. Um, and then I think I start, tried to start a YouTube channel once. Yeah. Uh, around the similar time I started Shogun. Yeah. And, like, one took off before the other. So yeah. I pursued that one. Um, <clears throat> but platforms like YouTube have always seen slightly differently because I kind of we grew up with YouTube and yeah. it feels part of our, our DNA. And it's like yeah. everyone's wanted to be a YouTuber at some point. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Of course. I was like, fuck it, let me give that a go. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think that that let me just give it a go attitude then kind of came over to everything else. Yeah. And it's just that that functional that functional posting. So I don't really like to post about you know what I had for lunch or you know, yeah. the things in my personal life. It's very much all entertaining, edutainment business. Yeah. Kind of stuff to help yeah. people. Right, yeah. similar to these conversations, um, and because you, I've seen you in the flow of meetings, mm. right, and I'm like in these conversations too. Um, for me, that's where I start to capture all my stuff as well. Before yeah. I started doing any fancy editing, or even had an editor to help me, I just used to just start my phone camera and capture yeah. me during a meeting. Yeah, and yeah. I still do that content to this day. If anyone's yeah. interested in watching, um, <laughs> but <coughs> it's it's so handy to be able to catch yourself doing those golden moments. Yeah, because you yeah. just provide so much value, and you don't know you're doing you it. Yeah, it's conscious at our point. You know, three yeah. years down the line, we're just going. Da, 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 yeah, a hundred percent, and that and that's what I think. I've seen, so I've seen you speaking, and it's like. Yeah, you like I will. T I can talk about sort of this sort of stuff all day because I I am mm. generally passionate about it, and you've probably seen the same. Like you have massive ups and downs, but actually, if you're passionate about something, mm. it's never it's never hassle to go to work. It's yeah. always like I'll go to work, I'll go to work every day, like, and you just sort mm. of push through. Yeah. So yeah, for me, the content side of it mm. is something I want to push a lot more because I follow some real sort of cool LinkedIn creators. Mm. Um, and do you know what? a lot of them are content focused? It's all content focused, which with the way sort of AI was going, like we were saying earlier, like yeah. it's crazy how a lot of the biggest influences on LinkedIn are content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's like it's almost very much like future proofing your business yeah. as well. Um, you know, if you have that human element that stands out amongst a, a sea of ever increasing AI content, yeah, uh, and the fact that we've never really kind of enjoyed or rated corporate content for yeah. a long time. Like, good luck if your brand just puts out a blog post every now and then. Because yeah. it's not going anywhere. Yeah, like, yeah. Especially because you're taking them off platform, so LinkedIn won't prioritize it either. Yeah. Um, there's just so much you need to do, and video needs to power all of it. Yeah. Even though I think graphic posts and text posts will probably still perform better numbers-wise on LinkedIn. Yeah. But it's yeah. about the impact that, that that content has, 100%. right? 100%. It's about, like, you, they need to see your faces everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, social is just the best vehicle to get top-of-mind content, to yeah. be at the top of everyone's stack. Yeah, um, yeah. Because... We are we are kind of need based businesses. We can also yeah. create a need if we get in there and show them the weaknesses and vulnerabilities that they have. Yeah. Um, but nine times out of ten, if someone actually is looking for a new social agency of a big size, yeah, the only way you'll ever get selected, especially if you're not already a, a, like a giant, yeah. is to massively stand out on yeah. content. Yeah. And so many B two B brands don't understand the power they wield. If yeah. Especially when you look at professional services. Yeah. Look at recruitment. Yeah. Like, can you name me one recruitment company that's incredible on social? None. Yeah. None, literally. So, let's say I won't say no, but like my old company were probably doing about two, three million a month in revenue. Yeah, and there's th and they were spending 
they had a big team. They had mm-hmm. a market manager. They had a few sort of marketing execs, mm-hmm. and it's just repetitive templates, yeah. same thing over and over because, again. Because the system works, they don't change it. Yeah, which is fine. You can continue rocking that system, yeah. making you loads of money. Yeah, but now it's time to build brand. Yeah, especially because yeah. things will change yeah. when Gen Z become the main buyers of yeah. today's platform. They don't give a monkey's who yeah. you are, 100%. and they hate anyone who cold calls them. Yeah, yeah. So you've got about ten years max. Before it completely before switches, yeah. So your million pound business, if you want that to go away in a decade, yeah. it might not be your problem. You might retire by then. Yeah, but yeah. Like it, we seriously need to get on top of it. And don't yeah. even get me started on law firms. Honestly, law firms has the bigger. The Americans have figured it out. Yeah. That's what really annoys me. So American real estate, American yeah. law firms, they get it. They've been putting out video content for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Us here in the UK, for some reason, well, I'm not sure if we think we're better than it or something. Yeah. But every law firm that I think of scares me. Yeah, because yeah. one, I have no idea how much they're going to charge. Yeah, me. if I ring them, I think we're going to get an invoice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Second yeah. of all, you only see the stereotypes about lawyers, so yeah. it's all going to be like the, you know, the, the sharks. They'll do it. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They're yeah. Suits, whatever. Yeah, and I'm like, if I had a problem, I wouldn't know who to go to. Yeah, because yeah. none of them has made content that appeals to me. Yeah, whatsoever. It, it's true. It's just such an easy gap. Yeah, easy yeah. Gap. It, it's it's true. Like it, massively, when you think about it, I remember. I w- my aunt lives in LA, so I went there when I was fifteen, so like over ten years ago. Nice. Um, and the estate agents there, they were their faces were on. I remember going there. Yeah. Like, Why is it there? They face understood personal branding like from fucking two decades yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 and that's yeah, that's going back twenty years. And they, yeah, they've um, they were doing it. And over in this country, mm. it's just it's so far. I think we're we are always a f- little bit of a time behind the US in terms of just like. Mm. Especially the personal side, I work with um, a big, uh, like a nationwide um, mortgage company, um, mm. and I speak with their market manager. Sort of, we have like weekly meetings, mm. um, and I was saying to her about the video content. I was like, yeah. "Oh, have you not thought about like video sites?" She goes, "The advisors refuse to be in front of the video." Yep, and that's one that's of the big usually the case, right? They're finding someone within your organization who that wants to create video. Yeah is extremely hard yeah it either has to come from leadership or you yeah. like uh we've actually encouraged clients and some of them have done to um hire actors literally yeah. or very small content creators who are in your niche that yeah. can become and you can partner with them regularly yeah to yeah. create kind of content and be your face and voice yeah because sometimes you will have an organization that just everyone goes nah no they won't do it nah. they won't touch it um but that it needs to happen somehow, and yeah. someone needs to become that that face or voice. Yeah, um, for sure. For, you know, for showing it to me and yeah. get everyone involved occasionally, but it's yeah. usually just because they're so busy. Yeah, um, yeah. But it has to happen. Do, but do you think, like, in the initial, say, recruitment process, you should be asking that question? Yes. As before you take someone on, is this something you'd be comfortable with? Yeah. Every one of our interviews. Yeah. Are you up for being in social content? Yeah. We do podcasts, we do this, we do that. Yeah. And yeah. part of our, our mold and our culture is that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So building it in from stage one is definitely the case. Yeah. Also, when it comes to social, we need to get out of this thing where whoever the youngest person in the office is, hand them the phone and they've yeah, got social. They yeah. Because no. No. <laughs> yeah. I, I, to be <coughs> fair, that's something that I was guilty. I was guilty of before. I've done it. Yeah. 100%. When I was like, okay, so we've got an apprentice. Oh, you're gonna make the cut. And it's, that's yeah, not what. It's just the young people. Social yeah. media. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. Just that sounds like a very old way to look at. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not. We're not old ourselves. <laughs> it's a very old way to look at. Like you're young. You're good on social media. Yeah, so. there's, there's just, just like weird thought presses like just because they use it personally yeah. that they can they wanna come up with a full eloquent strategy yeah. and execute yeah. posts yeah. in your tone of voice. Like yeah. Yeah. Social is such an incredible weapon to transform a brand. Yeah. And sometimes it can have effect on inner culture. Yeah. So one of the things, especially when I work one-to-one with clients, we I kind of make sure I instill a culture of creative testing. Yeah. So I run training sessions with the leadership of whoever we're working with to go, here's all the social platforms right now. Yeah. Here's how they operate. Here's how each of them and how you can grow within each, right? Here's how we're going to do it in our strategy. Now, I need your help as department heads of X, Y, and Z to make sure that your team are galvanized enough to do it. I can run this with each of your departments if I want to. This is a four-hour training session. Yeah. Like, realistically, it's not the best financial use of my time. But what it does do is it gets everyone on the same page. Yeah. Because otherwise, you face resistance from someone somewhere that does want to do something. Yeah. And it's like, we are doing this to make sure that we can completely transform the brand, we can future-proof the brand, yeah. uh, and we can actually make content for people to finally interact instead of having to get on the phones all the time or email all the time. Yeah. Like, if we did this right over the next few years, you can completely replace that workflow. Yeah, and for it's sure. insane how much of a difference yeah. it can make. And you can do it 
for free. Yeah. That, free. That, that, <laughs> honestly, that's what's crazy. Like, I feel like within these businesses, they haven't, they're not, like you said, th- you have to be future proof it. Like, mm. if personality is what's going to make you go for someone over someone mm. else. Like, yeah. so always, you're always going to, like. They always say people buy from, from people. Who, and people, they'll yeah. say that when they go to networking. Yeah. yeah. And then. All you need to do is digitally extend that effect. Yeah, exactly. And I think, like I said, and then you can start getting rid of like KPIs. Like you need to make a hundred calls a day. It's like actually, yeah. you just put out content, and then yeah. that. Oh wait, we've got this really hot lead list. Yeah. who already wants to buy yeah. because we put the work in on social. Yeah, yeah and then true. you can accelerate that process with paid attribution. Yeah, because whatever creators perform well on the organic, yeah. you then run as paid. Exactly, and, and that's then, then you're winning twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Because they always say you need. I I say this a lot to our clients. You need to better do it organically. Mm. first and then you can add the paid element to yeah, it it's a foundation needs to be yeah. added because yeah. it's it changes the mindset of the customer yeah so let's say if you post organically really well for a year um and then you start running that campaign it goes yeah. from previously when you ran one to oh, these guys to yeah. oh it's these guys yeah yeah, yeah. it's a completely different thing it's just yeah. brand perception and people yeah. perception um and it's just a lot of work and it's very scary and there's a lot of personal psychology wrapped up in social yeah and this is what holds a lot of brands back but all of us on LinkedIn consume content. Yeah. And when you really think of who are the, can you name three video creators on, on, on LinkedIn? <sighs> Gary V, maybe. Gary, Gary V, yeah. I can't. One of the largest creators on the planet. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. There's a guy I follow. He's from a European guy. Um, Head, I think he might put video out, but yeah, no, there's hardly any. It, like uh, that's what I mean. So the the niche for putting out consistent video on LinkedIn, yeah, is massive because everyone's consuming and no one's creating. Yeah, at yeah, a scale that's good yeah. enough. Uh, because there are like especially in, like law firms or whatever they put out video. Yeah, it's very like posh corporate video. Yeah, yeah, but not at the scale. People should be posting one to two videos a day. Yeah, at yeah. minimum, to to outpace everyone else. H- how do you find like? Because that's one thing I've, in regards to like your idea ideation for it, to say like, okay, I need to put two videos. Do you say to yourself, right, I need to post two videos a day or do you just flow a bit when something you're, something's happening? So I always shoot to post for once a day. Yeah. Uh, because like my new, like my new yardstick for success is now like consistency. Yeah. Um, yeah. So once a day is my minimum, but yeah. I know if I posted three times a day, I could have three extra results. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's yeah. just like simple, simple maths there. So yeah. whenever I can, I do. Um, and the ideation for it is really interesting. So I have multiple content vehicles to get me there. Yeah. Podcasting. Yeah. Vlogging. Capturing behind the scenes of meetings. Yeah. Uh, individual news and update videos. Team TikToks. Yeah. So the team create TikToks in, in a bulk one week at a time. So we yeah. can say hot on trends. Yeah. We do weekly podcasts, daily vlogs. So it seems like obviously a lot of content. We're very content focused and yeah. a lot of that content's yet to release actually. Yeah. So it should be really fun. But they then just take snippets from all of those. Yeah. Uh, and obviously just individual sit down YouTube videos as well. Cause I have like 20, un- like 20 titles that I need to create. I think I've only done a few already. So yeah. it's about covering those topics and you, f- you start with distilling your FAQs. Yeah. Kind of the set, the stuff you're sick of saying every day. Yeah. That's the stuff you need to start creating the videos. Yeah. With. Yeah. Then you can turn to search, use tools that answer the public and yeah. then take from existing data. Then when that starts to build traction, build it from your comment sections yeah. and threads of thought that come from you. Yeah. So there's yeah. those three things there, but you just need a vehicle to make that stuff happen. Yeah. So you can do a lot of it by podcasting. And that's yeah. where I ask a lot of people to start yeah. because it's a natural conversation you can have with a colleague and you bounce off each other with that energy. Yeah. Trying to sit down and do a video like that individually when you've yeah. done cold turkey, yeah. impossible. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's not impossible, but just weird. Yeah. You yeah. feel like you've forgotten everything you've yeah. ever said in your entire bloody life. Yeah. But th- that is probably the easiest and best place to start. It's yeah. just FAQs, give yourself a vehicle to make it. And then aim for volume in that. Yeah. Then you can really make sure your brand is just constantly pushing the boat forward. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. For sure. That's. that's yeah. One hundred percent. It's important. Really important. It is so. really important. Once you start to see the success as well. So I've been posting daily since last Wednesday. Yeah. I didn't post on Sunday. Right? Yeah. We've had over ten thousand impressions. Yeah. I've had four new leads. Yeah. Um. And I've had I think like. 30 to 50 new followers. Yeah, yeah. I've posted for like five days. Yeah. And yeah. I have a fairly active community and I'm glad yeah. I stuck around, but I didn't post for like four or five months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's there. Yeah. It really is Honestly, there. like we like <laughs> when, when we when we first spoke, like it popped up on my list. Yeah. Which I only get notifications maybe 
one, maybe max two a day when people post. And mm-hmm. yeah, so it popped up. So, so there's a little bit of luck involved yeah. when it comes to LinkedIn. Yeah. But LinkedIn knew I hadn't posted in a while. So and it's probably, you, yeah. So a lot of you at home probably have that advantage where you haven't posted in a while. So LinkedIn will go, this person's yeah. done a good yeah. post here. Yeah. You should yeah. probably have a look at that. Yeah. Um, but again, it's just giving yourself that vehicle. Get ahead of time as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially with like things like daily vlogging that we're about to do. I, like, I'm trying to get at least a week ahead of myself yeah. because otherwise I will drown yeah. in trying yeah. to do it because something will always happen. Yeah. Life will get in the way. Um, but again, that even if I just post a bloody selfie in, in that day, I don't I don't care. Yeah. And annoyingly, that will probably perform a lot better yeah, than yeah, the 10-minute yeah. eloquent <laughs> YouTube videos I put together <laughs> because LinkedIn's algorithm is busted. Yeah. That's one of my pet peeves, to be honest. Like, mm. just the... the I'm not against personal content on LinkedIn. I'm not yeah. one of those like, oh, this isn't professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not one of them. But the amount of effort that I put into content to make it better. And yeah. then someone's just like, here's how I rescued a dog from the yeah. building. Yeah. And what it taught me about business. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, oh, oh they're they're honestly, they're, <laughs> do you know what? I feel like there's a, that with LinkedIn, because LinkedIn used to be so sort of professional, but I feel like mm. there's that middle ground between personal and Personal and professional. Yeah, just being mm. real, but you're also just like yeah. educating around a subject matter. Yeah, like yeah. You want to be the person known for this. That's yeah. how I see LinkedIn. Yeah. And that's how people see you because you're a niche creator. Yeah. It's the same as when you follow, follow a vlogger on YouTube or when yeah. you follow, you know, a prank channel. Like, you know what you're going in for. Mm. Um, mm. It, there's only a few exceptions to that, like, I don't know, maybe Mr. Beast, but I guess yeah. you could count them as challenge videos, right? Yeah. So yeah. as long as you think of yourself and your business as a content creator, it then opens up the door to more creativity, but also makes things very clear in terms of what you need to do. Yeah. Provide stuff for an audience around a subject matter yeah. they enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. As simple as that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nine sure. plus ten, twenty one. <laughs> 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 On the subject of LinkedIn though, because it's one of my pet peeves, what are some of your pet peeves, either in marketing or just in life in general? In what on LinkedIn? Or <laughs> or anything. just in general? Um what are my pet peeves? Um I do you know what I feel like with businesses not being open to change that mm. within work that's one of the most most things that does frustrate me the most yeah. um what do you think holds them back from changing just from that thread? <laughs> do you know what they they always say like th- and this is something that i've been told a couple of times is is it if it isn't broke why fix it mm. and it's like okay but it is i broke. get that but yeah exactly but it is broke and it's like i think what's happened is you've got a lot of uh businesses that they just haven't moved with the times and mm. I think it's people not being open to a conversation. Yeah. Because like, worst case scenario, if I sort of have a conversation with someone, even if they don't sign with me, I know I can provide them something that's good, like some thought provoking stuff that's going to make them think about it. And actually, mm-hmm. that's a, that's even that's a win for me. Yeah. Sometimes, if people, if you open people's eyes to something a little bit that makes them, as I said, reconsider the way they view something, mm-hmm. that's that's a win for me. But yeah, it's people not being open to change um and not embracing change as well because yeah. are there common things people are resisting at the moment especially in your industry <laughs> so at, so at the moment uh what i found is people they things are getting really tight for businesses and yeah. like uh my partner she works for a um for a big company who owns sort of multiple smaller companies and it's mm. like they're posting losses across the board i think they've got a group of maybe 10 companies and yeah. only yeah i think one of them made profit last month so yeah money is getting really tight so people don't want to spend but then what i say to people is if i could say to you you spend for every pound you spend you can get four pound back um mm. through some campaign does that sound good and that like, yeah, yeah yeah that sounds good um but if i say to you okay this sub, this might not bring you something back straight away but in six months time you'll see the the dividends from yeah. it um i think there's a lot of short termism like sh- short termism in terms of people were just it's month to month at the moment and that's what is frustrating yeah. i think a lot yeah. of people i think you 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 must have seen it as well with companies all the big boys spend a massive amount of their budget on marketing yes massive amount of their budget yes, on marketing yes, yes, yes. i think i don't know it's up to like 30 percent of money spent yeah, um and in business brands like coca-cola they know they're not going to get it back yeah it's Mas- just brand awareness yeah it's brand awareness and it but you know they have the cash flow to do that yeah and i think this is the when you are a business is more month to month, there's yeah. a massive fear element there. Yeah, but yeah. This, again, this is why I'm just so hot on content because yeah. you can do everything brand wise and probably build a much deeper, stronger connection than people like brands like Coca Cola or Pepsi yeah. have with an audience because they're so bloody large. They're completely you're unable to relate to that brand yeah. in any way. It's just brand resonance to like subconsciously buy 
fucking hypno toad from uh, yeah. from uh, Futurama. But like, you know, there's there's so much you can do with content, and you can yeah. do it all for free with the thing in your pocket at this po- yeah. current moment, which you s- probably spend at least five hours on a day. Anyway, yeah, it's in your hand, yeah, and you know you can make stuff for free with it, yeah. And that's where you have to go. I must do what others won't yeah. succeed, yeah. Like yeah. If, you, if that's where the whole growth mindset comes into yeah. it for me, because yeah. if you're willing to be the one who goes, you know, what's up, guys? Let's let's do this, yeah. That it freaks out everyone else, yeah. You win, yeah, yeah. You, as long as you can get that distribution nah, high, for enough. sure. Uh, but it depends on what type of business you are as well, because it's harder in e-commerce. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why we don't often work with a lot of e-commerce businesses. Uh, yeah, it's we, hard to put the personality so we, we behind f- e-commerce without an influencer budget. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have that, I can't help you unless you, the, you, the founder, yeah, are yeah. willing to be the creator yeah. for this product. That's going to put it out there. Yeah, we, yeah. It's yeah. E-commerce is it's a industry such a big industry. I've never really worked with people in e-commerce. It's, it's strange. Well, we, we've worked with a couple. And, but the, the 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 balance was always if you don't have a budget I really can't help you yeah because if you need to drive sales it needs to be paid paid yeah. ads yeah and if it needs to be organic then I need to build a very long standing relationship with your brand I need to work with you for the next six months to a yeah. year maybe onwards yeah uh, because we're trying to bootstrap and turn you into a creator from scratch yeah um, yeah and it's often like trying to convince them to use platforms like TikTok that would reward them probably more quickly yeah um, but the ones I've worked with had resisted TikTok at the time or the package they choose with us didn't include TikTok. Yeah. So we price it slightly differently because of the amount of effort that goes into it. Yeah. It's a yeah. full video based platform that requires us to go f- and do physical shoots with you. Yeah. I can't price it the same as I do Instagram because I can do graphics and the yeah. nature of things you send me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's platform choice as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So yeah, for me, I think, yeah, but that's people not being open. That's my, that's the main thing. And mm. it's like, and I get there's budget constraints, but you, you have to spend money to make money as simple as that. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, it, yeah. That, and that's what I've been getting a little bit more resistance from is people, they just, and, and I completely understand it. Like being, mm. you, you're the same, I'm sure as well. Like being a business owner is a lot of pressure because you're not only worrying about how you're getting paid, you're worrying about how everyone else is getting paid. You're mm-hmm. worrying about all the bit like, so it is a lot of pressure and then you've got to drive the business as well. So, so yeah, that's one of the things that frustrates me in business. Um, personally, I'm I'm very like quite I'm just very I'm I sort of sell like that I don't get too up don't get too down so hey, I, what about you some things stubbing your toe like yeah water with too much ice in it there's got to be something um I'm trying to think I'm just trying really to think of something petty. that my missus does that <laughs> irritates me <laughs> well, let me start there uh, get me um ask me to do the washing up yeah there straight you go. after dinner oh no nah, you got straight to after settle. you let it settle uh, we have the conversation like. Yeah, leave. I do the washing up straight after dinner. Like, wait a minute. Wait, 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 Can you yeah. give me like an hour just to yeah, let everything like, digest? Wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. yeah. So that's one of the things. Um, What's up there? Uh, what else? Yeah, honestly, I'm not like an easily annoyed person. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Professionally, I think obviously similar to my ICU business is not being um, there for change, but. Also, them like it's the contradiction mm. of them not seeing the value in social when. At home, they'll go watch a YouTube car review or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, it really boggles my mind. And yeah. there's a few local car dealerships I'd love to work with as well. Yeah. That don't do enough content. And they are just in the best playground. For yeah. Like automotive car. I'm not talking car reviews, content. Yeah, shorts. yeah, yeah. Like, YouTube shorts for car reviews are murdering. Real, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, massive. Every, like, there's literally like five dealerships around of a yeah. decent size that I could just transform yeah three to six yeah. months yeah they've been a different stratosphere yeah um, yeah i might reach out to some yeah uh, so <laughs> it, it's one of those ones where i'm like that that frustrates me when i i see the potential in every brand especially like if i want the most boring classical businesses to come to me yeah i don't care if you sell mattresses to b2b companies that want to take a nap like yeah the most boring stuff because that is the biggest transformation potential yeah that's what i like i like to take an accountancy and i like to make it absolutely nuts and completely stand out yeah because otherwise you're the same as every other yeah. accountancy yeah. yeah don't cling on to this professionalism that gets no one nowhere yeah like unless you work with extremely high scale corporate clients mm, mm. that will not look at you with a barge pole if you post a video yeah which i've never heard of in my entire yeah. life yeah um then you just need to make s- do something different and again it's that ain't broke don't fix it thing. yeah it's the not understanding their real potential is also just as frustrating yeah because if you give me 30 minutes 
I'm literally going to blow your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. And it sounds big headed a little bit, but I'm like, I'm serious. I see so much that you don't see yeah. in yourself. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. not a lot of brands really think about introspectively uh, because it's all, I always start off the question with how many businesses do, do you follow for fun on social? And that's the usual reaction I get. Yeah. Like you have to think about it so hard. It's, it's it means that it's just wide open. I think the only one I could say I follow for fun is probably. And our business is Manchester United. Yeah, sports Manchester team. United. Like <laughs> the usual answers are things like Red Bull. And yeah. Things like that, right? Because they dedicate to being yeah. full content driven extreme sports. For years because as well. Imagine just trying to create content with a can. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You have to be creative around it. Yeah. And B2C has had to learn that creativity. Yeah. And B2B will see this wall soon. Yeah. And they need to get over it. Um, personal pet peeves, though. That's an. In- <laughs> that, there's. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there, there are a few. Yeah. A few. <laughs> so watching videos, right? So yeah, on YouTube, and obviously either if I'm not if I'm not on YouTube Premium, which I've gotten now, by the way, best thing I've ever gotten. In my see, life. is it is it worth, oh, worth It's worth every penny. I, I watch three I'll, pre-roll ads. You yeah, mean. yeah. See, I um I watch YouTube. Like it, it helps me go to sleep. So yeah. I listen to I listen to like meditations. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Rain noise, rain noise, rain Check noise, out rain noise, noise. Rain. <laughs> <laughs> The ocean is pretty yeah, good as well. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not putting up with like three ads, so I'm already annoyed by something yeah. to this video. And then it's oh, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is the first time I'm watching this video. Yeah. I don't know who you are, and I'm not back. So first of all, I feel isolated. As a yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, before I start this video, I want you to like and subscribe. Why should I? Yeah. I don't You've know given you. me fuck all reason yeah. to give you anything. Yeah. And you yeah. made me watch three ads for you yeah, to tell just me to subscribe. Yeah. It's already been a minute of my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gone. Like, And uh, for a lot of content, a lot of brands do this, is they put their like branded pre-roll in the first three to five to ten seconds of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Kills the engagement rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the best part that entices them in first. Yeah. There was literally kids in their bedroom making Call of Duty videos that mm. figured that out before this very smart big brand. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So just give them the audience the value as quickly as humanly possible. Yeah. And add your branded stuff afterwards. Yeah. Like, it's just a simple attention-grabbing mechanism. But it does my nut in. I think it's partly to do with, the like, the dynamic of TikTok versus YouTube. Yeah. Like... People have the the OG YouTube mentality where they just talk to the people that are following them, mm. so they find it harder to grow because they're not optimizing for a new audience. Yeah, so many brands do this as well. I call it assumptive content creation, where they go, "What's up? Welcome back," or they talk about themselves with even like the subtle free knowledge that they think everyone else knows. Like every video or piece of content you put out, you should assume no one knows who you are. Yeah, it should welcome everyone. Yeah, and if you're not seeing any growth, it's because you are not inclusive enough. Mm. Not in terms of like DEI, or whatever. It's just like you're not talking to new people. Yeah, then that's the dynamic that TikTok and Reels are brought in. Yeah, seventy percent of all people discover fresh new content on the for you page. Yeah, they don't go to the following as much. Seventy mm. percent. It's yeah. fucking nuts. Honestly. Like every it video, and, but it's hard yeah. to create a video that welcomes everyone immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be done. Yeah. And, and the thing, like you said, it's short form content, like that short reels. Like one of my friends, he he created a YouTube um, uh, Instagram page mm. probably about two years ago. And I think he's got like a couple hundred thousand followers now, but he's had reels that have done, come from nowhere and they've done like 10 million plus views. Yeah. And it's like, I was like, what's this, what's, what is the deal with it? How do you do it? Like, and he's like, I don't know. He goes, sometimes people just like my content when he gets that like, momentum with it. I must admit, Instagram Reels, even from looking at so many, we post, uh, like, I think all of our clients are posting Reels. Yeah. And I could not tell you which one's going to do well, yeah. which one's not. Yeah. I, there's no, like, the data that Instagram provides mm. on mm. that videos is awful compared to platforms like TikTok. Yeah. Because, TikTok really go in on things like the watch time, yeah. the when people drop off rate. Yeah. You can see at what point in the video, it's like the hotspot on YouTube yeah. where you see it. You know when and what happens. You're like, I get it. That's yeah. why that happened. Yeah. And you can make changes. Yeah. Instagram is just a pure fucking shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just, just like, don't, all yeah. right, cool. Um, I didn't expect that one to blow up. Yeah, and it just does. Too. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. I think there was, there was one we posted on Instagram where it was like, we one time we just wanted to test like this basic Canva graphic that yeah. was just like with music in the background. It was like an ocean or whatever. Yeah, and then it just got to like eleven k views, and we had like eight hundred followers at the time. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I'd put together very eloquent, like <laughs> fully thought out videos or like yeah. things that were super on trend. Yeah, yeah. No in it, but somehow that list of fourteen ideas worked. Yeah, which was bizarre. And mm. then another <laughs> the other thing that I hate this performed well 
is putting a, a, like playing a podcast clip of ours and then like a game clip underneath, like a Subway Surfer or something <laughs> like that. We did. I sold my soul and I yeah. did. It. And both times we did it, it's got over ten. It's hits. done well, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, oh. it's just the content I, people want to consume, though, isn't it? Like it is. People know what they they want. People know what they like, and it's like mm. a lot of the time you can provide amazing value. Mm. Um, give a lot of information, but rather they just have okay. This is five free tools that you've probably seen a thousand times before, mm. and and it, and it is and that and it is that's a, it's almost like once these things get momentum, they they get pushed more, pushed more, yeah. pushed more. So yeah, if you're a fresh creator, it, you, you probably won't get away with doing the here's my five tools stuff yeah. anymore. Um, the storytelling has been shown to be the most effective mm. medium for this. Yeah. Um, so instead of the here's five tools, you start the video with. Uh, I have a business that's done over X many figures and we use so many tools every single day and I've discovered them completely by accident and yeah. I wanted to share them with you. Yeah. Like that is... That, yeah, that's a really... A, yeah. There's a different dynamic to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, that feels more personable. And yeah. you feel like you're being brought into some kind of secret club. Yeah. And then they go, Canva. It's like, yeah. no shit, Sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're in now. It's, it's crazy how many people haven't... Like, so what we do, even that every person I speak to, even if we don't work for them, mm. uh, work with them like business-wise, I'll always say... Do you, have you ever heard of Canva? And like, it's surprising the amount of people like, no. And it's like, how do you know? That's like not every, hearing uh, of oxygen. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I say, if you're going to, if you're like, we work one of our clients at the moment. And like I said, they, they're small, smaller business. And I'm just like, they've got like a, quite a big team. And um, one of their, like, they got a, a say one of them younger people in social media. But they got a, they <laughs> got a go young <laughs> She got, and I said to her, I was like, have you ever heard of Canva? And she was like, no. I was like, honestly, it's one. So my designers are very much, Almost a anti little bit anti Canva, and most I'll, designers are. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I always say to them, like, if you can put something together in half the time um, on Canva, which will look just as good, like, yeah. just do it. Like, don't be messing around with Illustrator, so, going through. <laughs> yeah, no. To be fair, to give you an insight into our creative process as well, we are my, our designers are the same. Like, yeah, you know, they have a pride in their craft. Yeah, uh, and then I'm the, the asshole that comes on and tell them, like, right. So you need to pass this over to the social media managers now. Yeah. We're not as eloquent as, as Photoshop and InDesign as yeah. you are. So I need you to import that design and yeah. recreate it in Canva. Yeah. So they can continue it because otherwise you will then have to create all of the monthly graphics. You have to and go I back. I doubt you want to yeah. sit there and create 20 carousels yeah. Yeah. when you've already got everything else. To exactly. Do. So it needs to be something you can pass over. And that's the glory of Canva though. It's, oh, it's, a, it's an amazing, yeah, honestly. Um, and it's just making sure that you don't fall into the standard trap of let me pick one of the first templates. Templates that come, to come up. up, yeah. I can spot Canva template yeah. from a mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, we, 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 we done, um, so one of our designers, she, uh, Started making some videos on there. We done like a um, influential designer series, mm. um, which we still haven't released to be fair. But mm. she made it on um, uh, Canva, and it was incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. Because you can do so much. Yeah, because you can start with a template, so it's yeah. not just blank. Yeah, and you can completely transform it. So yeah. it's actually unique to, to you. Yeah, and there's very few tools that it, it has that like like Photoshop has that Canva yeah. doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just like the the fact that you've, you've already learned how to do it as a professional. Yeah. So it's like it, you. You hold on to yeah. it. But I will say Canva's video editing capability, I've been surprised at how kind of naff it is. Yeah. Compared to the design aspect of yeah. it, right? And it's probably because they've expanded into so many different things about tools and they're like yeah. even I haven't fully explored everything yeah. that Canva offers. But like there are tools like V Dio, yeah. CapCut that are just yeah. Cap infinitely Cut, CapCut's class. CapCut yeah. is like yeah. all of our daily vlogs, by the way, yeah. are editing CapCut, CapCut. CapCut's class. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like yeah. And they're free, which is also insane. And there's even like AI tools now, like Chopity, which yeah. will just like create. Like if I put this episode in Chopity, it's going to create like 20 clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In like 10 minutes. Yeah. So that's insane. But the fact that like I'm assuming like they should probably just acquire something like CapCut because yeah. they've got them. Like yeah. Well, I think last time I saw, I want to say Canva's valued at nearly $20 billion or something crazy insane. like that. Insane. That Australian couple are nuts. Yeah. But the thing is, did, so I've read the story of the girl um, who, who founded it. She basically, mm. the reason she found it, is because she was on Photoshop Illustrator and she had to try and teach her friends how to use it. Yeah. And she's like, this is a big learning curve. Yeah. The ma really massive learning curve. Like I so I started um like design wise was using AI. I'd never actually really used Photoshop. It was mm. really always AI, um, Illustrator. Mm. Uh, um but now it's like it's it's strange. Like I, my team, I'm I'm always saying to him like, where well, you can just use both. Use both mm. because I you can create something just as good on Canva as you can on Illustrator. Yeah. Don't be wrong. There's certain things where you have to sort of 
um, transform things and move things around that are a little bit more difficult. Yeah. But like it's ease of use, and I, I, yeah, I recommend Canva and CapCut. To be fair, as another to every every business I speak to, CapCut is I'm just just use it because it's a really good tool, like free tool alert. Like. Yeah. Especially <laughs> if you're using uh, TikTok, like CapCut needs to be yeah. your go-to. Yeah, because yeah. the amount of CapCut templates that I use commonly on TikTok yeah. will allow you just to participate in what the community is mm. doing. Yeah, so we do that for several of our clients. To be fair, and it's such an easy win. Uh, it does depend. Like going back to the camera thing, it depends on what you're designing. Like yeah, you have to design a full flyer. Yeah, like busting out Illustrator or, yeah. or Photoshop makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but yeah. like not. Um, if you, it's just easy. If you were putting out a news post on what's yeah. happened recently, then yeah. it's, it's Canva. Yeah, yeah. It's just ease of whatever yeah. the content is, right? Yeah. You just pick it based on common sense. Yeah. But as long as you have both and you're using every tool at your disposal. And again, there's so many, if anyone doesn't have TikTok at home, get it. Yeah. Because there are like 10 of, like five at least, like tools we use every single day that I've randomly come across on my yeah, page. Yeah. And I've learned so much from that platform. Yeah. <coughs> and it's what they're pushing for as a platform. Yeah. So yeah. creators, for instance, they're only monetizing videos that are over two minutes. Yeah. So they really want to speed up the content evolution. Yeah. So people have not noticed that the same things happen on YouTube. So mm. if we think back to YouTube, it used to be Charlie bit my finger, the magic unicorn. Yeah. Yeah. Smosh. It was random. It was funny. Yeah. It was just like the internet back then. Yeah. Now you can learn to code. You yeah. can learn to f do Photoshop. You can change. You can be a plumber. Yeah. Like you can do anything on that platform. Yeah. It's insane the depth it has. Yeah. TikTok wants that level of respect. Yeah. So it's diving deeper into that. So people, again, when we're looking at the creator economy, the biggest competition is actually TikTok and YouTube, in my opinion. Yeah. Instagram, yeah. the meta suite, they're falling far behind. They're yeah. not even worth looking at. Yeah. The two titans in the space are YouTube and, yeah. and, and yeah. TikTok yeah. right now because they are the platforms you can make a living from. Mm. TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, and now Kick, which is yeah. the new one. Like Those are places you can actually make a full-time living. Yeah. Anywhere yeah. else is not where the creators will be. Yeah, yeah. So, and the creator economy is what you should follow as a brand to know you're in the right place. It's going to be strong for a long time. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. On finishing off, just on final thoughts and all the rest of it, what's a weird fact about you that no one knows or that you're happy to share? Um, Weird fact. Because I will also do one. Weird fact, all right, weird fact, weird fact. Uh, can't do that one, can't do that one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm exiting them off in my brain. Um... <laughs> Weird fact about me. Oh, that one will get me cancelled. Um, Do you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, you go first. You go uh, first. I'm weirdly skilled with yo-yos. Yo-yos. I was one of them kids. You know when the yo-yo people came to your, your primary school? Yeah, yeah. Do you I, remember? I, what the I, was, I was hooked. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I had the pro one that like spins at the bottom and you would do like all the, all the madness with it. Yeah. I was that guy. I thought that was the shit. Wait, yeah. I've, I've still got one. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done it. What's it? I'm trying to think of, yeah. Oh yeah, so I'm actually um people never expect it by looking at me or me and me, but I'm like a massive Adele fan. Love massive, that. massive Adele Great fan. That. Like one of my old friends, um well not my old friend, one of my friends I used to live with, we we live with each other for about a year and the Hello Adele track was like our anthem. So we're in a lads yeah. pad, we're going out every week <laughs> and our anthem <laughs> we'd get back after nights it. out. We'd fit it on and we'd just <laughs> sing it together. So, yeah, that's something a lot of people don't know about me. Yeah. The people closest to me know, but people normally yeah. would be a bit surprised by that. One and of my top. As soon as, you, as soon as these episodes get posted, everyone's just going to go, hello. <laughs> it's me. Yeah, now nah, I'm a yeah. massive, massive Adele fan. Fair, fair. I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll rate that. <laughs> we did, I've been really looking into going into the States lately, and I've been obsessed with Houston, Texas. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I, randomly, you know what YouTube's like, recommended me some. Goddamn country music. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're this big over there. I've country slaps, I'm yeah, telling you. So the biggest, um, I can't remember his name. There's a guy in the US at the moment. He's one of the biggest artists in America at the moment. Yeah. And he does stuff for like rappers and stuff. Like, yeah. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah, he seems a little bit older, but he's like, a, he's like one of the biggest American music artists in this country. He wouldn't yeah. be outside of, of yeah. the US, I can imagine. So. Yeah. No, it's just it's just so catchy. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. you're supposed to hate it. But yeah, I'm like, nah. I want to get me a ten gallon. Hat yeah, yeah. And some goddamn barbecue. <laughs> like that's what I want. Oh, Houston, Houston is real. Like that sort of vibes as well. Because you go to like New Have York. Have you been there before? I've never been to Houston. Um, so I've been LA. I've been New York. I've been Florida. Nice. Never been to Houston. Though. Tell you what, I'm just this is personal curiosity now, right? I I really want to potentially live in the states, right? Yeah. Biggest differences you see and why. You would or wouldn't live there? 
Um, so it's it's with with the US. What I've found is East Coast and West Coast is completely different. Mm. So, like for example, you go to New York, it's like London, really. Like, but yeah, not keen on on New York. Yeah, so. it's yeah. but from what LA. So I had some friends in LA, so I used to actually go quite a lot. Mm. Um, people are just so friendly. It's almost like it's a, it's like that up north. I've heard for us, it's like they're exhausting. Yeah, yeah. Like the thing is, for like if, if you are having a bad day, like you don't want to have an in depth conversation with like the the <laughs> assistant at the at the store. Like I yeah. get that, um, but they're just yeah, they're just different. I think there could be sometimes maybe a lot of like fakeness in it as well. Mm. But at the same, I've. The only thing that's scary about America is the gun situation. Yeah. That's the only Did thing. Did you see any of it when you were in LA? Nah, 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 nah. I've never seen it. So you just see it in the It's all we're going to be in. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I think, for example, like, if, if for, like, so many people die every year there. And I think that's Pretty the only thing. In, in a, that's the only thing. And it will never change. Like, my, like I said, my aunt, she was, they lived in London. She moved to the US mm. when she was early 20s and like she got kids over there and everything and like did she move for work or yeah no so i think her her husband he moved there for work um yeah yeah and yeah so they so my, my cousins are american like they were born in america mm. um but they're living in sacramento at the moment nice. um and Go they teams. love it yeah yeah they, <laughs> yeah they love it they love it they um they but my uncle always just say to me like it's his neighbor mm. would want it would almost look for an excuse for him, like for it, that's why he'd never kick a ball over the garden because if, if yeah, someone's on your property, gone. yeah, it's gone. And it, and if someone's on your property, they can just. I've seen a lot of stories like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it happens, and and that's anything that I think puts me off America. Yeah. Um, because it's the only country, it's the only like first world country where that's a thing. Like, it's, it's a strange dynamic, yeah. isn't it? But, but yeah. there's big opportunities, though. Massive yeah, opportunities. That's what gets me though. I mean, I was looking at um. Oh, the other day I was looking at the marketing manager salaries over there. Oh, some six figures. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like, huh? yeah. And do you know what? And you like, depending on the state, no tax. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> but the thing is, as well, what one of my friends, he's um, in recruitment over there. Yeah. Um, being a Brit yeah. in the US, that like, that's his thing. So he kills it because I th- see, this they, lo- they, lo- they love for they business. I was like, I know a clean house. Yeah, they they love Brits over there. Love Brits over there. Honestly, they love say? Brits. They what love Brits. Say? That's something that I'm not right, sure. Right, that's confirmed a few things. <laughs> <isn't it>? um, <laughs> but to be fair, last question. If, if Milk Tree never happened, where do you think your career would have ended up? Do you reckon you would have stayed in recruitment? Was there something else, another niche that you would have done somewhere that you would have pursued, do you think? Um... Can be completely off the rails. So do you know what? One of my first jobs I had um, was as a uh, lettings agent. Mm. That was my first proper job. Um, and do you know what? The money wasn't great, but I loved the job. And mm. I was working half eight to seven, Monday to Friday, yeah. Saturdays nine till three, mm. and it, every day went so quick. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't have minded getting back into that. It, it's just, it's obviously financially, it's got to, it's got to work. Yeah, um, yeah. But when I look back, I really, I did actually enjoy that job. I enjoyed the meeting people every day. Mm. I enjoyed this, like, you you sort of do your admin in the morning. You'd be out all afternoon. Yeah. So I did, I did like that. Um, but yeah, I, I probably would have stayed in recruitment. Oh. I probably would have stayed in recruitment yeah, and just and just pushed on. I rate that. I rate that, mate. Thank you for joining. Yeah, me. no, you're welcome. It's, it's awesome. good. Yeah. Lord knows how much we've been talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. we had a conversation the other day. And I was like, yeah, you, <laughs> did, uh, you said definitely a podcast. We yeah, talked like, about we it. We should have right recorded now. the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but maybe there's a part two coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, I'm always here. I enjoy, like I said, I enjoy talking to other like-minded people. Really, hundred so. percent. Levi, is there anything you need to communicate to the people? Where to find you? Who you are? What you um, do? Any of that? All right. So if you wanna. Follow us, uh, Milkshire Agency, across all um, platform, across all like social media platforms, and then website is milktreeagency.com. Milk mm. um, and if yeah, anything web related, automation, software solutions, just give me a shout. You heard it here first, folks. Cheers, guys. See you later, guys. Thank Perfect. you for joining us. Thank you.